Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another 6x6 paper pad tutorial. Today I'm featuring a P13 collection. This is a collection um, that is made by a Polish company and so it is, should be available in Europe. I wanted to try to mix it up and when I can find brands that are available in other countries, I tried to show them too because I do know that there's a lot of subscribers and watchers who maybe can't access some of the US based paper. This is the Four Seasons Autumn Collection. There is a winter, summer, and spring. So if you do not need fall or autumn cards, you can probably adapt a lot of this to one of the other paper pads that is more suiting to what you need at the time. I, at the time of recording the voiceover, the this particular paper pad is sold out at scrapbook.com where I got it. I might try to hold off until it's back in stock, but I also will link you to the other collections just so you can get an idea. My favorite thing about P13 is their back and front cover have these images printed on them. So you can cut these out and instead of having to recycle the front and back cover, which is pretty common, you've turned them into these embellishments to use on your card. So I don't have to buy die cut embellishments with my paper pad. They do have some extra stuff available in their lines. And I've shown in the past how you can use your scan and cut to cut them out, but today I'm going to choose to fussy cut them. There are advantages and disadvantages to both methods. I'm going to make four different designs today, but there'll be 48 cards. So I'll be making multiples of each card. I started with these two sets of paper. There are four of each paper in the collection. So there's four papers that are exactly the same. And these two, so two sets of four, have these really beautiful big images in each corner. And so I wanted to pick a sketch that would work well with those big images. And I'm gonna be using my One Sheet Wonder sketch number 11, which will be linked. It'll be a blog post that you know kind of breaks down everything that I was doing. But what I'm doing here is I wanna show you how I'm gonna stamp all the sentiments I'm gonna use. I took this MFT die and it cuts three pretty basic rectangles, but they're actually a really perfect size for these small stamps from Simon Says Stamp. You could use any number of stamps in your collection. I've talked about how I do something similar to this many times where like I will take my most popular, most favorite banner dies and I will cut a template for them and I'll be able to stamp a bunch. But this one here, this MFT rectangles, it's die cuts three of them all at once and then I can stamp all three of them all at once. So I'll be able to make a lot of sentiments quickly, which will work out when I'm making 48 cards. I die cut it. Then I took some painter's tape, which is a low, this is a low tack painter's tape. And I laid it down such that the sticky part is poking through the holes. And that way, when I lay my die cut rectangle on top, it will stick to the tape that's behind it but it's low tack, so it's easy to pull up. Then I'm going to pick three sentiments from this Simon Says stamp, stamp set, and it has a lot of teeny tiny, I think they're called like tiny word sentiments, and this one I believe is the encouragement, but there are several available. I have done a video where I talk specifically about how you can save time with your sentiments, and I bring up a couple of different products that can make sentiment stamping easier, and I explain in more detail how I'm doing something similar to this. But those little rectangles are being held down um, by the tape, and then the magnet is holding my big template. And I'm lining up each of the individual sentiments that I've picked out onto my misty door. And what this means is that when I pull out each rectangle after it is stamped, I'll be able to put a new rectangle from that same die into the misty and I'll be able to stamp them all down at once. Now you might get really good results just stamping with a stamping block, in which case, honestly, that's probably faster, but I tend to stamp crooked or um, not stamp as like clearly as I want. Like sometimes it winds up lighter or something of that nature. So I like my Misty. I have my Misty, so I try to use it to its fullest and use it to my advantage, but you could certainly just stamp sentiments with a stamp block. And if you're doing it that way, it'd be pretty quick too. I am using a pressure tool from Twiddler's Nook to get some nice even pressure here on my Misty. I don't think it's necessary. 
I think a lot of times you can use like a cloth that you have on hand or if you're wearing long sleeves, pull your sleeve down and that will allow you to press smoothly and firmly all across your misty cover. But it can be a helpful tool and I've heard that some people with wrist issues really prefer having the tool to work with. So I will try to remember to link that in the video description as well. So to get to the first card design, I showed you that I picked out those papers with the really strong images in the corner. And I used sketch number, sorry, one sheet wonder number 11, which you will be able to download the PDF and it will tell you exactly how to cut everything, exactly how to assemble everything. You don't need to worry about the measurements if I talk about them in the video. This big panel that I'm using one of the corners is four and a half by three inches. So I basically cut those papers in half and that gives me both of the corners to work with. But because this is double-sided paper, I then have that extra strip at the bottom that's half an inch, or sorry, one and a half inches by three. And that little you know uh, strip of paper that's left, I'm gonna use that to make a strip across the card that goes behind this main focal point panel. And this is allowing this beautiful pattern paper to really shine. And I know it's not for everyone. Like some people just really love stamping and coloring. And if and that is sometimes my jam. I like to color really elaborate scenes. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a lot more of like my Copic work and that kind of thing. But I also really love beautiful pattern paper. So I'm letting this pattern paper shine. And then I'm taking that leftover strip and to make it spread across the whole card, you cut that three inch in half and everything is matted. The PDF that you'll download will tell you exactly what size to make all of your mats. If you choose to use mats, you don't have to. And it will explain how to assemble everything. But what I did there is once I split up that orange strip across the card, I wanted to make sure that as I glued this large panel down, everything would be level. I did not want it to bump over the orange strips. I wanted it to look nice and smooth. So I took a scrap piece of the craft card stock and I placed it under the top part of the panel. And then I pulled one of those sentiments that I explained how to make and I popped it onto the card. I made 16 of that card because there were eight sheets of paper with those really strong corners that I wanted to take advantage of. Next up, I have this pattern paper in the collection that has all these little tiny frames and images and cut aparts. I never know what the right word for those are, but like they have very distinct lines on the paper. And I wanted to cut them all apart and use the like frame on, on some of them, but then other ones, I couldn't use the frame because one has a sentiment that didn't really work for me and the other ones were a little bit bigger. So I wanted the two inch by one and a half inch bits. And that's what you see lined up there on my work mat. Those are the ones that I picked that would go together. And then I took a second sheet of complementary paper and I cut the strips that will go at the top and the bottom. So the four pieces of paper that have the cut aparts, I cut those all into two inch by one and a half inch rectangles. And then I'm gonna mount them on mats that are an eighth of an inch bigger. Don't have to worry about these measurements because again, this is a one sheet wonder. This is a new one sheet wonder though. So I will be, um, it's one sheet wonder, it'll be number 25 I believe. And I'll create a separate video of it to show how I would do it with just one sheet of paper, but here I am mixing it up a little bit because I am, instead of using one sheet, I am using this blue paper for all the strips, and then I'm using this specialty cut apart paper for the blocks. But when you see the one sheet wonder, it'll describe it a little bit differently because most of the time I won't be working with a specialty paper that has one and a half by two inch blocks. However, I have seen those in some of the Doodlebug collections. So this might be a good one if you have any pattern paper with those um, specialty sizes. The way that I'm creating it, because I am creating this with these cut aparts, there is a scrap left. 
And I'm going to take that scrap, which is here, and I'm going to cut it in half to make a little banner and I'm going to put it inside the card. But in the One Sheet Wonder, I have an idea for what I would do with this scrap so that I don't have to put it on the inside. However, adding it to the inside of the card is always a great way to use up your scraps. So if you have any random strips of pattern paper left as you're trying to, you know, use up a 6 by 6 pad or just use up some scraps, once they get to a certain size, it can be really helpful to just make a quick little banner shape. In this case, I just cut it on a diagonal and um, that can work and it's really easy. Or you can cut the more traditional little triangle to make a banner shape and then you can place that inside your card. You can place it. Um, my two favorite places are the bottom left hand corner or the top right hand corner because that's where is usually the most blank space left when you are writing your sentiment or when you're you know adding your message inside of the card next up i am using this pattern paper that is pink on the back and has these gorgeous florals on the front. Oh, sorry, I made 16 of that new one sheet wonder because there were eight, there were four of that cut apart sheet and then I needed four pieces of paper to complement it. So it, it worked out to 16. This one here is going to be eight. This is one sheet wonder sketch number 22, which I have a video for on my channel. And again, you can download the template. It calls for you to cut your six by six paper into a three by six strip and then make a diagonal across it. Then it is mounted on a quarter inch mat. Most of my mats and like all my one sheet wonders are quarter inch. That's kind of like my favorite size mat, but eighth of an inch, sometimes the measurements work out better. So you'll occasionally see that. But here, my mat is a quarter inch bigger. In the video specifically for one sheet wonder number 22, I will talk about how to make a template and in the blog post, I show a picture of how my template worked out and share some extra measurements. With this, I'm actually going to switch up the sketch a little bit just because I do want that pink paper to be on top. And when I was cutting them, like when I was putting the diagonal in, I wasn't really thinking about it. But if you want your diagonals to face in a certain direction, like you want the back one to be in the top left corner instead of here, I'm going to put it in the top right corner. It's just going to be flip flopped. Then you may need to take a beat and think about how you're cutting your pattern paper. I honestly knew it would work out either way. Like I didn't care whether it was in the top left or top right corner. So I just kind of went for it when I was cutting them out. If your paper has some directionality or something like that, it might matter more. I love double-sided paper because this is the same sheet of paper, yet I'm getting two big, bold, beautiful patterns on my card, and I'm going to be able to get this like really nice, big, blank space in the pink to add an embellishment and a sentiment. Again, I want everything to lay really nicely and level, so part of that pink panel is going to be right on top of the flowers, but I don't want the rest of it to like bump off. So I just took some scrap cardstock and put it underneath on the left side and the bottom there. Just keep everything level and smoothed out. It's also a fantastic way to use up any of the scraps that you created in cutting all of the mats. I did craft cardstock for all the mats. I use Michael's Recollections 110 pound cardstock for most things that I do and they have a craft pack so like the whole big I think it comes with like a hundred sheets they're all craft and I use enough craft that that works for me but of course that's not available everywhere it is an economical option if you are in the U.S. though this deer cut apart is one of the sh like images that came printed on the back side of the front and back cover and I'm going to be using all the images that I fussy cut out from that back and front cover are going to go either on this design of card, which I'm going to create eight of because there were four sheets of paper and each sheet of paper made two. So I'm going to use a bunch of them on these eight cards and then I'm going to show you one more design and I'm going to use the rest on those. 
but it's really nice that the embellishments just come as part of the paper pack and you don't have to purchase anything additional. And it can always be fun to go find some stamps in your collection that work really well and you can color those up and add them too. But for those who do not like to color, these are perfect. And again, if you don't like to fussy cut either, I have shown in the past how you can use a scan and cut to do it. So if you have one, that's another option. This was the last paper that I had because I was making so many multiples. Uh, this is my fourth and final design. I am going to be using One Sheet Wonder template number 11. I'm sorry, uh, number five. This one would also work pretty well with those corner pieces. It would have made them a bit smaller because these big focal panels are only three by three and three quarters instead of four and a half. So it wouldn't, I think the other sketch worked better and that's why I used it of course, but if you're looking for another one that works with those patterns where there's like a big bold thing in the corner, this is a, this particular one sheet wonder is great for that too. So I'll be using one side of the pattern paper, which is the pumpkins for the focal panel. And then I will use the other side, which is kind of a random pattern. It's like this really beautiful light cream. And then it has all these like fall images gathered in little, I think the words vignettes throughout the pattern paper but it does make it a little bit tricky to work with and I didn't want it for my big panel because as much as the pumpkins are very busy, they don't have these sort of distinct little scenes that I think would have been harder to work with in a large panel. And so I think this paper worked well for accents, but I did even think about how, because like there's, for instance, there's a set of like glasses as part of the imagery and I was like, mm, I don't know, because I, I think that would really draw your eye being these like dark gray color, that kind of thing. And so I did think a little bit about it as I cut out my paper, like what parts of that pattern do I want to show? And I always recommend you kind of take a, you know, a minute at the beginning and before you start chopping your pattern according to the PDF template think about, you know, when once it's assembled and where it's going to go on the card, are, is that the focal points you're going to want or is that the highlights you're going to want? So anyway, again here, used a little bit of cardstock to make everything nice and smooth because part of the pumpkins are going to be on those two strips and part of them would go directly to the card base. So prop it up to keep everything nice and level. And then the little scenes that I'm going to create here, I'm going to go again, pull those sentiments that I talked about at the beginning of the video and I will put one in the bottom corner. Now, for some of these, I'm going to put the big panel on the left like it shows in the sketch, and for some, I'm gonna put it on the right. And that's two reasons. One, because I thought about which pieces of that second paper I want to show through, and so if there was anything I didn't like, I could kind of cover it up a bit with the pumpkins. And because some of these images that I wanna use, some of these kind of die cuts, but I cut them out myself. But those images like the squirrel, the way he's facing looks better if he's pointing towards, you know, a, away from the corner of the card. Whereas if like he, if the panel was on the left side and then I, like I glued him down all the way in the left corner, he'd be looking right off the card. And that would be kind of awkward. I don't know if that made a lot of sense, but what's nice about the one sheet wonders is you can mix them up a little bit to suit your needs and I always like I don't necessarily worry about everything being on the left or right side as you saw I mixed it up two times already okay so in the video description you will find as many of the products as I can link to hopefully this paper pad will be back in stock for anyone who is interested in this particular paper pad I'm just going to quickly show you all 48 cards there will also be a blog post wherein I link Every other thing, actually, like I'll show a picture of the whole big group of cards that I made, like all 16 or eight of the card. And underneath, I'll link the PDF that you can then go download and bring to your craft room if you want to recreate this specific card. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know which of the four designs was your favorite or um, 
what you would plan to do with these. If you'd like to see more videos about how to use your supplies, such as One Sheet Wonder tutorials, please subscribe and click the bell to get notifications. I will link all the products I can in the video description and link you to my blog where you can download any templates and get more information for even more inspiration. Come find me on Instagram or check out these two videos here at the end. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.